So my son Beckett and I, we uh, play a game that we saw on YouTube, and the name of the game is called Sink or Float. All you do is you basically predict when you drop an item into the water whether you think it's gonna sink or float. So here we go, we're gonna play together. All right, this ball, do you think it's gonna sink or float? All right, on the count of three, I want you to say it out loud in your groups right now. I know, say it out loud, play along. On the count of three, and then we're gonna test it. Here we go. One, two, three. All right, here we go. It sinks. If you said sink, congratulations, you got it. You got it. All right, here we go. We're gonna do another one. The other one is this ball. This ball, do you think it's gonna sink or float? You tell me. On the count of three, ready? One, two, three. All right, let's see. It floats. If you answered float, you got it correct. Congratulations. All right, last but not least, here we go. Let me wipe off my hand real quick. All right, this can. Is this can gonna sink or float? What do you guys think? On the count of three, ready? One, two, three. It floats. Everybody probably knew that this can was gonna float. Now here's the interesting thing about this can, right? It doesn't matter whether it's in a one and a half liter pitcher, like it is now, if it's in a five gallon bucket, a 500 gallon swimming pool, or the ocean. This can will always float until it will float until what is on the outside gets on the inside. Once it does, then the can will no longer float. It will sink. Solomon in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 Solomon, the wisest man to ever live, here's what he says. He says, above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. See, as Christians, we have to make sure that what's on the outside doesn't get on the inside. Everything going on in your life is a symptom of your heart. Some of you may want your finances to change. Change your heart. Some of us may want our relationships to change. Change your heart. Some of us may want our careers to change. Change your heart. The question is, is Jesus in your heart? Is Jesus in your finances? Is he invited into your relationships or your career? Every day, your heart beats approximately 100 thousand times, pumping 2,000 gallons of blood through 60,000 miles of blood vessels. Your heart is about the size of your fist and it weighs between 8 and 10 ounces. Heart disease is the number one cause for death. Do you know what the doctors say <laughs> whenever you have heart disease? They say change your diet. I think some of us, maybe we have heart disease in our spirit. And I would recommend us changing our diet. We need to be careful of what's going in, right? We need to maybe cut out some politics right now, or maybe some news, or maybe those counterproductive thoughts. Do you know why they say laughter is the best medicine? It's because laughter is so good for your heart because it actually increases your blood flow by about 20%. You see, one of the ways that we can guard our heart is to practice this one word called contentment. Contentment means to be at ease on the inside, regardless of the circumstances on the outside. Paul, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 12, he says, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry whether living in plenty or in want. So here's Paul. Paul saying, there's a secret, guys. There's a secret to living and being content. And it doesn't matter whether you're hungry. It doesn't matter whether you're well-fed. 
It doesn't matter whether you're living in need or with plenty. There is a secret of being content. And if we're not careful, we can actually skip right over the secret. We don't even realize that he's given us the secret before even telling us there's a secret. Like four verses earlier in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, he actually tells us what the answer of the secret is. And I'm going to tell it to you. So here's the secret. Are you ready for it? Philippians 4, 8. It says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. That's the secret of being content. Do you have things that are excellent, things that are praiseworthy, things that are great going on in your life? The secret of being content is to think about those things. My question to you is, what's flowing out of you, right? Like we know what's gonna flow out of that can is water. And the reason why is because we saw the water go in the can. My question is, What's flowing out of you? Is it like this attitude of gratitude? Is it this praiseworthiness that's flowing out of you? Or is it this negative grumbling, this bad spirit that you have? Guys, I know there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now, whether it's the politics, whether it's the coronavirus, whether it's the rioting, whatever, you name it. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on. We have to be careful as Christians to not allow what's going on on the outside to get on the inside. I'm gonna leave you with a quote. It's written in a book called uh, 40 Days to a Joy-Filled Life, and it's by this guy named Tommy Newberry. Here's what he says. He says, you will always have something to to complain about, and you always have some blessings to count. Inevitably, life is filled with peaks and valleys, but even in the valleys, there will always be something working really well in your life. And even on the mountain peaks, not everything will be perfect. Life is always a mixture of good and bad. You have hundreds of problems and millions of blessings. My encouragement to you is let's focus on the millions of blessings.